Good morning. Dear yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we start the work of Ukraine Crisis Media Center, and the topic of the first briefing is legitimate choice, violations, falsifications, education, society, and actions. Our speakers are Lev Levitsky, coordinator of information campaign You of Voice, Taras Buika, coordinator of the project network of active citizens Pilno, Andrei Sharaskin, uh, coordinator of the civil platform Protect You of Voice, Violeta Moscow, founder of the global Ukraine movement, and Igor. Markov, politician, sociologist. Good afternoon, everyone. So we should have a broader representation. Vladimir Flons uh, should have been uh, uh, present. Uh, the Mikhail Flons and the Igor Dushin coalition of uh, CEC uh, should be present here. But you know that the night was active and not everyone were able to come here today, but uh, we would like to present information that uh, they helped us to prepare. Uh, so we carried out survey during two months, monitoring for two months, about three months even, and we monitored uh, electoral campaign, uh, uh, presidential electoral campaign 2019. We recorded many violations, but uh, they were not systemic, and we are going to speak about them today. Uh, about them today, and also about uh, Ukrainians from abroad and young people in elections. It is uh, really important. And also about the parallel counts carried out by um, civil society sections and about the results of this. I will start, and I'm uh, Taras Boyka, coordinator of the project Network of Active Citizens, Spilna. We uh, cooperated with our partners, monitors, and uh, I would like to focus on the overall issues and to show the trends that we saw throughout the Ukraine. The, the recorded violations and how they influenced, and the comparative analysis that can be done. Uh, we compare with 2014. So this data is of 1 a.m. from the site of the Ministry of uh, Internal Affairs. Uh, and uh, this data uh, for three months uh, of um, monitoring the majority of violations. These are the violations concerning the uh, process, but not the violations of electoral rights. In three months, we uh, had uh, um, 6,000 such violations, and uh, uh, they uh, didn't yield some practical results. And uh, we were interested in violations uh, concerning uh, uh, um, uh, and uh, uh, we saw that uh, uh, the majority uh, of these uh, violations uh, were uh, in uh, occurred in March, uh, and uh, some of them uh, on the day of. Uh, uh, the elections uh, out of uh, the electoral uh, fraud uh, and crimes, uh, there were the uh, attempts to bribe uh, the uh, voters. For example, on the day of uh, uh, the voting, there were two uh, attempts uh, registered of uh, the attempt, attempted briberies. Uh, so th that's the information of the Ministry uh, of Interior. Uh, and. Uh, it's not the data of any other organization. Speaking about different uh, other types of uh, violations, for example, the violation of uh, the uh, secret uh, secrecy of the ballot, uh, then uh, also an attempt to uh, obtain a ballot paper by a person who was not entitled to vote. 23 cases. Uh, and uh, these were uh, typically, uh, and all practically all of these cases occurred uh, in the rural areas, so they didn't threaten uh, uh, in any serious measure uh, the uh, outcome of the ballot. Uh, among minor violations were, for example, the lack of uh, proper uh, uh, contact details on some of the uh, materials, uh, political advertisement materials that were uh, used uh, in the course of uh, uh, the uh, president, uh, presidential race. Also on the day of uh, 
the voting uh, uh, which uh, were in this day all uh, the uh, uh, political ads uh, are prohibited uh, there have been some uh, minor cases of uh, the presence of uh, these uh, ads uh, or publication or use of these ads um, in the, by different media uh, by a number of media so as we can see there are there have been uh, practically uh, very few crimes on the day of uh, election, uh, except for uh, the cases uh, that are now under investigation by the Ministry of the Interior uh, of Ukraine uh, of these uh, attempts uh, to bribe the uh, uh, voters. If we compare the data for uh, of, uh, the elections of 2014 and uh, uh, yesterday's election, we could see that uh, in uh, 2014 there were 127. Uh, this year, 196 uh, violations. And the difference also uh, was uh, uh, due to uh, the trend uh, at those elections of 2014 uh, of uh, uh, having uh, among the uh, candidates uh, the clear uh, the clear can uh, the clear choice uh, the candidate of uh, the choice of the majority of uh, the voters uh, which in this case uh, is not uh, which uh, in these elections is not the case because uh, of uh, the uh, presence of a whole uh, uh, range of a whole era array com of competing uh, candidates so now i would like to turn uh, the floor over to uh, Mr. Andriy uh, Sharaskin, who is uh, the coordinator of the civil platform Protect Your Voice. And he uh, would uh, be able to tell you uh, also in detail about these violations. So, uh, friends, uh, says uh, Mr. Sharaskin, that on uh, March the 14th, here in this uh, Ukraine uh, um, Crisis Media Center, there was a meeting of uh, the organizational committee of uh, the uh, volunteers uh, of uh, monitoring uh, of the organizations of moni for monitoring the elections. And um, it was stated at that meeting uh, that the main goal uh, of, of all those organizations uh, were to prevent violations uh, and also to uh, provide for transparent uh, counting uh, of the vote, of the ballots cast by uh, the voters. And uh, uh, our civic platform, uh, Protect Your Voice, is uh, uh, composed of a number of uh, 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 member organizations. We were uh, uh, yet in January registered at the Central Electoral uh, Committee of Ukraine. And uh, uh, in 2014, uh, as we remember, the uh, elections were centered uh, around the slogans of uh, uh, protecting uh, the independence of Ukraine, uh, its uh, uh, sovereignty, and uh, it was uh, then uh, quite uh, clear that uh, uh, the uh, Favorite, uh, the favorites, uh, regardless of their uh, names, uh, were uh, viewed through this prism. Uh, and uh, as Mr. Taras uh, said, uh, this year, for example, uh, like uh, in 2014, uh, there were uh, uh, no major violations of electoral law. Uh, but uh, we cannot be silent about the effects of such violations on the eve of the elections, as, uh, by the way, happened also in 2014. And uh, so uh, I think that uh, uh, these, the outcomes of the investigations of these violations uh, will uh, be brought to your attention uh, by uh, the uh, law enforcement uh, uh, bodies and... Uh, here, uh, I would say that more than a thousand uh, people participated uh, uh, as uh, in the election, in the monitoring of the elections, and they were uh, working in the uh, form of the so-called mobile groups who uh, were moving from one uh, polling station to another in order to be able to monitor better the process at as many polling stations as possible. And I hope that uh, uh, our uh, representation, the number of people uh, who uh, are our members will uh, increase uh, so that uh, our civic society 
uh, uh, will be more active or be more active. After uh, more uh, than a month uh, of, uh, of work of our call center, uh, what information have we got? About one third, and we have uh, divided them into uh, a few blocks, about a third uh, of uh, the uh, addresses and queries and questions uh, were related to uh, the uh, location of uh, uh, to how to locate the polling station uh, and different other consulting uh, cons uh, uh, in requests of uh, uh, information of, of consult uh, consultation type uh, uh, queries. Then, uh, on the day of the elections, uh, the, or on the eve of the elections, a number of people uh, also. Uh, made claims about uh, the refusal of the local authorities to include them into the uh, registers of the electors and uh, similar uh, for uh, poor equipment of the polling stations and similar things. Uh, on the day of uh, uh, the uh, ballot, uh, uh, there were uh, the effects of abuse uh, of uh, power on the uh, part of uh, the territorial electoral uh, uh, committee or, or the uh, elect uh, committees or electoral committees uh, in uh, the constitu constituencies. Uh, what uh, I already mentioned about the work of our coordinators in the oblasts, in the administrative regions of Ukraine, and uh, uh, in the course of that work, uh, they uh, f on the day of the elections and during uh, the night they were our activists uh, were also traveling around the country visiting different uh, polling stations and monitoring the uh, process of the counting of the votes as far as uh, the uh, cases of the refusal of the local authorities to include uh, the their citizens the the uh, citizens into the registers of uh, the citizens the majority of those citizens who uh, were uh, refu who who were whose names were refused to be included into these uh, registers were of 1999 to 2000 a year uh, i mean born uh, in these two years Strangely, uh, they were the majority of those who, whose uh, uh, names were refused to be uh, included. Then uh, also a, an issue of uh, the uh, staff uh, of uh, the and members and uh, uh, leading figures of the electoral committees of different levels. And for example, uh, uh, there were uh, there was a case in one oblast uh, when uh, a person, uh, for example, uh, who was the presiding officer of the electoral uh, committee, just uh, 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 resigned in a few hours uh, before uh, the uh, polling started. The other facts. Uh, there was, for example, uh, some uh, inadequate uh, uh, the, the cases of inadequate uh, uh, contact of some of uh, our vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis or towards some of our monitors. For example, there was an attempt uh, to beat uh, one of, uh, of our, uh, our volunteers, uh, monitoring volunteers. If uh, you would like to join uh, the work of our organization, you might uh, leave uh, your contact details, call, call our uh, organization, leave your contact details, and you will be contacted by our staff, and we uh, will start cooperating with you. Uh, I'm sure that uh, for the next uh, uh, tour of uh, the, uh, the next round of the elections, uh, we are going to uh, establish sort of a headquarters uh, in which a number of uh, civic organizations and non-governmental organizations uh, could participate. Uh, uh, and uh, so I would like to thank uh, uh, everybody who uh, may, who contributed to uh, the good atmosphere of the elections, the lack of any uh, uh, unrest on the day of the elections, uh, and uh, I uh, would uh, like now to turn the floor over to uh, uh, Mr. Markov.
uh, who is uh, going to comment who is going to uh, comment uh, uh, on the data uh, of the exit polls and uh, the uh, already uh, counted uh, votes. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, properly speaking, our work uh, is uh, uh, that of uh, sociological expertise, and uh, uh, we were trying to do uh, comparative analysis of uh, the data of uh, exit polls. And uh, uh, we also wanted uh, to compare our data with the data of uh, uh, the network, uh, civic network uh, Opora. Uh, and uh, thus uh, we uh, could facilitate this uh, process or monitor uh, this process of uh, establishing the results uh, of. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> of the boat. Um, so we included uh, 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 the data, we analyzed the data of uh, four uh, organizations, including uh, the uh, data compiled by uh, uh, Ms. Yulia Timoshenko's uh, uh, electoral headquarters. Uh, headquarters. And I uh, say uh, that uh, the analysis uh, proves uh, the uh, overall reliability of the data uh, that uh, has been uh, gathered uh, uh, and presented by different sociological and polling organizations. Speaking about the uh, exit poll, uh, based on uh, these samples uh, uh, analysis, uh, I'd say uh, that uh, the f accuracy of uh, the candidates' uh, votes would be as follows. Uh, Zelensky uh, up to 33%, uh, uh, Mr. Timoshenko from 12.3 to 15.3%, uh, Boyko uh, eight, from 8.3 to 10.7 percent, Mr. Gritsenko uh, uh, from 6.5 to 8.5 percentage points of uh, the votes uh, cast. Uh, our, uh, let me remind you that uh, our assessment uh, was uh, done uh, uh, basing on the inform or using the information provided by the polling organizations, opinion, poll uh, opinion polls organizations themselves, who were conducting those uh, exit polls. Therefore, we, uh, we analyze uh, our data as uh, uh, more or less uh, not the exact forecast, but just the analysis of the trend. Uh, but uh, at the same time, we can say uh, that uh, the first, the leading candidate uh, uh, is already uh, uh, clearly uh, seen. Uh, Mr. Poroshenko uh, could be uh, uh, on the second place, but uh, the uh, number of votes cast for, Ms. cast for Ms. Timoshenko is not uh, yet uh, known. And uh, given uh, the, the data uh, we have now that uh, uh, in uh, the foreign uh, polling stations in the, the uh, foreign countries, uh, the number of votes cast for Mr. Poroshenko would be higher than here in Ukraine. And uh, we uh, think uh, that uh, uh, it could contribute to up to a more uh, uh, another 1% uh, of uh, the difference of votes. Uh, uh, on uh, the uh, account of Mr. Uh, uh, to the account of Mr. Uh, Poroshenko, uh, so Mr. Poroshenko is likely uh, to have uh, the second place as a result of uh, the uh, voting uh, yesterday's voting. Uh, Mr. Gritsenko could be uh, on the fourth place, and Mr. Boyko on the fifth place, uh, or vice versa. Uh, uh, I would like to add also that uh, we wanted to add uh, the data from uh, the exit poll uh, of Ms. Timoshenko's uh, uh, headquarters, electoral headquarters. Uh, it showed uh, that uh, her headquarters uh, data differed significantly uh, from uh, uh, the data of some other polling organizations. Therefore, that exit poll uh, of uh, Mr. Timoshenko's electoral uh, headquarters, uh, we do not view it as uh, uh, something that uh, clearly uh, or more uh, precisely, more accurately uh, describes uh, the outcome of the elections. The analysis of the data of uh, voting in the military units uh, uh, of Ukrainian armed forces uh, uh, shows uh, 
that, uh, for example, among the uh, servicemen, uh, the difference, uh, the votes uh, uh, cast for Mr. Poroshenko and Mr. Zelensky were uh, split more or less 50-50. Uh, as uh, uh, the main tendency, uh, tendency that uh, we uh, uh, conclude uh, is present uh, in the, uh, these elections, it's uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, more or less uh, uh, European, uh, pro-European uh, orientation of the Ukrainian electorate. And uh, uh, as uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Oh, uh, well, as, as the speaker says, uh, it's, uh, they drift uh, away from uh, Russian influence. That's his main conclusion. Now the floor uh, is uh, given to Ms. Violeta Moscalo, who is uh, the founder of uh, the movement Global Ukraine. Please tell us what, uh, uh, how the votes, uh, how the, the voting uh, went on in uh, the foreign countries. Uh, as far as the elections uh, abroad are concerned, uh, briefly I can describe uh, them uh, that uh, the organization of uh, the uh, uh, vote uh, uh, was uh, uh, quite uh, archaic. And uh, the number of uh, the polling stations was insufficient, uh, in our view, because we have millions of Ukrainian citizens who now uh, work uh, in foreign countries, work abroad, and uh, are now working, or have been working. And uh, we uh, can say uh, that uh, in uh, 72 countries, uh, uh, there have uh, been, uh, there were uh, the polling stations uh, established uh, according to our data of uh, uh, our global Ukraine movement uh, data. At least uh, 80 countries have uh, rather uh, numerous presence of Ukrainian citizens uh, in uh, their territories. Uh, and uh, certainly also uh, this uh, small number of polling stations uh, created a problem uh, for many Ukrainian voters uh, because, uh, for example, people from uh, uh, in, in some countries needed to go from one country to the other, to some neighboring country, uh, covering hundreds of kilometers of uh, distances in order to cast their ballots. Uh, uh, for example, that is uh, the case uh, 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 in Canada even, uh, where uh, some of our voters had to uh, uh, cover the distance of 4,000, 4,500 mile, uh, kilometers uh, uh, in order to, which is 2,000 miles uh, or in excess of 2,000 miles, in order to uh, vote. So that's uh, as far as the first round of uh, uh, voting uh, is concerned. As far as the second tour, uh, is uh, concerned. Uh, uh, again, uh, the uh, people, uh, the voters uh, need to uh, see to it that they are entered, their names are entered into the registers, uh, not eliminated from the registers. Again, uh, this is a rather archaic uh, uh, a procedure, uh, for example, uh, it would be much easier uh, if people could, uh, for example, inform uh, uh, the electoral committees of the change of the addresses and so on uh, online. Uh, and as uh, it uh, it's happening in uh, some uh, countries, uh, then the proxy voting, the post uh, voting by post, uh, which is typical for. Uh, the developed countries could also be uh, wide, broader used uh, in uh, the Ukrainian elections. But uh, in our view, uh, the, for example, the uh, post voting, uh, voting by post, uh, could uh, be uh, also uh, wide, broader used uh, by our foreign uh, located uh, citizens, citizens who live and reside abroad. Uh, it would cost them a couple of dollars to buy a few uh, uh, postal stamps uh, and uh, envelopes uh, rather than uh, spending uh, uh, hundreds of dollars in order to cover hundreds of kilometers or thousands of kilometers uh, uh, distances. Uh, again, it also, uh, the uh, 
uh, po uh, voting by post uh, eliminates the need uh, for them to uh, stand to queue at uh, the polling stations. Uh, so postal uh, voting and proxy voting uh, could be uh, used uh, broader. Uh, because we know that uh, in some uh, lines people have uh, uh, people were waiting for a long time and they we could not even uh, uh, cast their ballots uh, in the end uh, because uh, uh, the polling stations uh, were organized in the premises of Ukrainian embassies or consulates uh, that uh, usually have uh, limited spaces or small premises and uh, this could be avoided, in my view, and uh, we need probably, we are going as uh, uh, our organization, we are going to inform the foreign ministry about these uh, things, uh, and uh, also uh, uh, we, uh, uh, on the basis of these, uh, our observations, uh, uh, presented a bill number 153 to the Verkhovna Rada, to the Parliament of Ukraine, uh, and uh, we, uh, which that includes that uh, option of uh, procedure of electronic uh, uh, change uh, or online change uh, of uh, the uh, contact details of uh, the voters. So uh, we hope uh, that uh, uh, it could be possible uh, or it would be possible to uh, remedy this uh, situation before the upcoming parliamentary elections uh, in Ukraine. Uh, and I hope that for the next uh, uh, elections, uh, presidential elections or uh, uh, parliamentary elections, if they happen in five years, uh, uh, all of the voting procedures uh, could uh, be uh, organized uh, electronically so that uh, people uh, uh, do not have to go to the polling stations, uh, which uh, is uh, quite a widespread uh, practice already in uh, the uh, in many countries of Western Europe and uh, some other countries. Therefore, uh, we understand that we have a lot of work to do, but uh, generally speaking, uh, uh, 31,592 voters uh, uh, managed uh, to cast their uh, uh, votes uh, uh, abroad which, uh, as we know, is a very small proportion of the overall number of Ukrainian citizens who uh, are now abroad. Uh, the uh, next uh, tour uh, of, president of the presidential elections is going to take place on the eve of uh, the uh, Catholic uh, Easter, and I'm not at all sure that, uh, that uh, many voters, uh, Ukrainian voters, would uh, like to go to make these lo uh, long travels uh, on that day in order to vote. Uh, For example, uh, uh, if we uh, look at uh, the practices of some foreign countries, like, for example, the United States or Canada, they uh, do not organize the polling stations in their uh, uh, embassies or consulates abroad at all, because they say that these are different institutions, uh, organizations. They are not uh, uh, intended to be used as the polling stations. Uh, they uh, instead uh, provide a lengthy period, like uh, one month, uh, for uh, casting uh, the votes electronically. Please open the pictures. Our information campaign monitors young people and uh, how they vote, what motivates them. We know that young people are less active uh, during the elections, and uh, we provide information to young people to tell them about uh, the second round and uh, what is important for carrying out the elections. And we have a telegram board that we've created this year, and uh, it includes uh, a lot of questions and answers and also information about the candidates. And uh, uh, these were official declarations, official CC information from the site, 
about information about the candidates, their biographies, and also our colleagues from Chesno movement provided information about whether this candidate is involved in uh, some uh, illegal activities or he was absent during voting in the parliament, for example, or other things. And also uh, the questions of interest to the youth. So this is the question about the place of voting and the search uh, in the register. 37% uh, were interested in this question. Also, also we told about the electoral process. And uh, we s divided this process in several parts. And for young people, uh, the most interesting was uh, the money that should be uh, given by the candidates uh, in elections. Uh, this money that is a um, deposit uh, of the uh, candidates. Also, the interests of young people, two candidates. So these are percents, and two thirds of our subscribers were interested in Zelensky, 40 percent, uh, Poroshenko, 25, uh, Timoshenko, 15, Koshulinsky, uh, and 15, Leshko. And in uh, the next picture, the information about the candidates. Young people uh, were not interested in these candidates. They had many information <coughs> about these candidates uh, uh, in the social media, but no one was interested in these candidates. And this is interesting that no one took interest in them. And also the violations uh, and uh, bribery, some interferences, uh, uh, and uh, uh, that can be carried out by administration of universities. Fortunately, there were no such cases. We didn't reveal such cases. So elections were clear and uh, uh, different youth organizations and uh, trade union organizations uh, of the youth, they were not manipulated uh, in the process. So these were the results of our monitoring. Thank you. Also, Vladimir Flons, uh, e democracy uh, should have been present here, but uh, they uh, uh, are still counting. That's why uh, please show the site of this organization, and we will be able to see the results of parallel counting of votes. So these are the results uh, concerning 6,000. Uh, so here we have more than 6,000 uh, uh, papers uh, of uh, the records of uh, ballot uh, records, as I have already told you 633 uh, uh, records uh, uh, were collected uh, from uh, 633 uh, polling stations. And what is interesting here that out of these uh, 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 records, uh, uh, f more than uh, 254 uh, contain some uh, errors. So. Uh, Probably the reason for that uh, uh, was uh, that 18% uh, 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 of uh, uh, those uh, records uh, contained uh, 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 the ballot paper counts uh, contained uh, some uh, errors, and uh, uh, they uh, needed to uh, the uh, to the recounting, and we hope that after that recounting uh, there could be uh, uh, no uh, problem, no uh, errors of that uh, sort. So uh, on the website you could see the data for all uh, the six thousand and six hundred and fifty-four uh, 
polling stations uh, and uh, you could see the numbers uh, on their uh, accounts, uh, their accounting data on uh, uh, published on uh, the website of the Central Electoral Committee. Uh, if there are no questions, thank you very much and uh, see you next time.